Well, we love it when the bass are shallow. So much easier to catch. But how deep is too deep? Well, the deepest largemouth that I have ever caught was down on Lake Norfolk. I was striper fishing with jigging spoons, and all of a sudden I was like, boy, this is a small striper. And then the fish got to the surface, and it was about a three or four pound largemouth. I caught that thing between 60 and 70 feet. That bass was way, way down there. Now, there are some really critical factors that determines on each body of water how deep the bass will go. And that obviously is oxygen, but the two criteria that play into that are water clarity and then the vegetation. If you have dirty water or really stained water, the bass are not going to go as deep. They're gonna be shallow more often. But if you have good water clarity, that most likely is gonna spur the growth of vegetation and that vegetation will oxygenate the water just like wind and the waves will. So the bass in those types of impoundments, rivers, lakes, ponds, are definitely going to be deeper. So how do we figure out how deep to fish, right? Well, after the spawn, okay, so you're in this post-spawn mode all the way through summer and quite a distance into the fall, the major migration is done. Clearly in the spring, they migrate a lot. Late fall, they migrate quite a bit as well. But once these, these middle months of the year start to set in, the bass don't move all that far. And what I have noticed, this is with largemouth especially, is that they like to call an area their home. They don't want to travel too terribly far from it. So what they will do is they will slip up and slip down, change depth in a fairly small geographical area. I like to think of it as a cone. So if you kind of take a cone and the point of the cone would be, let's say where you saw some, some large mouth, saw some bass up shallow, less than 10 feet up near the shoreline. So that would be the point of the cone, okay? Or the vertex of that cone. Then as we go down into the water, that cone is going to spread out and that kind of represents the area that I will probe. The deeper I get, the more left and right I will also check as well. Now, as far as pinpointing that exact depth that I'm going to target. If I'm fishing down the shoreline and I'm getting lots of, you know, one pounders and I know those bigger fish have moved out, I'm going to take some time and look for bait, whether that's shad or me personally, I like to look for big schools of sunfish and bluegills, okay? They're pretty easy to pick out on your electronics. The shad are just gonna be a, it, most often a pretty dense ball. And then the sunfish or the bluegills, they're gonna be just a whole bunch more scattered dots on your, your down imaging or your side imaging. So whatever depth they are at, that's where I'm going to start. I have filmed some massive schools of sunfish suspended offshore in the summer months, okay? And when you have big schools of prey, the predators are not going to be far behind. But if I can take that, that depth that those sunfish are hanging at and then move it towards the shoreline until I intersect some bottom composition, I'm going to go ahead and start there. I don't want to fish for suspended bass. I will if I have to. So if I can intersect some hard bottom composition at that same depth, that's what I'm going to do. Now, shore anglers, you can do this same thing, okay? So if you're walking along the bank and, and you see a lot of sunfish, you see minnows up there, you're probably going to be in a pretty good place. But if you don't, if you're walking down the shoreline and it's like no life whatsoever, go to those places that have produced for you in the past or where you've seen fish in the past in these mid months of the year and then start to go deeper from that point now are there going to be bass deeper than where let's say that school of sunfish is at i got a school hanging at 15 feet are there going to be bass deeper than that? Well, probably but you know me i like to play the percentages and i feel i'm going to have a better chance of success being around that food source even if the fish are not actively feeding on it i think they're going to be right there close by 
Now, if you'd like to watch a video and that's kind of just the opposite of what we talked about, but it's very interesting, is how soon will bass move shallow, especially coming out of the winter into the spring when that water is really, really cold. Go ahead and check this one out right here and make sure to go out and encourage someone today. You never know how you might just change their life. For the Bass Fishing Life, I'm your host, Steve Rogers.